Hi, my name is Dave Zelenka. Today I'm going to look into the question, what is appropriate use of technology in the classroom? In 1993, I graduated from college and was enthralled with the new field of interactive education. Apple Computer had developed HyperCard, Macromedia had created Director Studio, and excitement filled my veins. After college, I began developing educational CD-ROMs for the National Park Service, and then moved into HTML web page development. It was an exciting time in the new push towards educational product development. However, the enthusiasm didn't last. I began to realize that technology pulled people away from each other. It ate at our time, and despite all the great things we can learn, I kept asking, is the sacrifice worth it? 25 years later, I'm still half-hearted towards technology and what it does to people. I see people and students glued to their devices like robots being fed the addictive thought food of their choice. I've been addicted, so I know the problem well. We feel that if we're not keeping pace, we will be left behind from the progress of the world. This is an unfounded fear that draws people away from a more simple life. Neither my wife nor I own a cell phone, and we love it that way, and we're not falling behind with the times. What we do with technology really hasn't changed much in over 20 years. The only difference is that more people are doing it. But we can't throw out technology completely, can we? As educators, we are examples for the next generation, so we need to be seriously reflective. We must ask, what is appropriate use of technology with our students? Randy Yerrick, the Associate Dean of Educational Technology at the University of Buffalo, has a litmus test for us. He explains, the best educational use of computers are those that have no good digital equivalent. So what are computers good for in education? Here's my top 10 list for fourth grade and up. I feel that technology should be very restricted for children younger than fourth grade. Number one, research on the internet. Teach students how to filter the content they find. Learn to use Google filters for file type and domain limitations. Be sure to monitor closely their online behavior. Consider limiting the sites they are allowed to visit. Number two, differentiation for special needs students. Tools such as Read and Write for Chrome allow students with limited reading skills to access content above their reading level. It also generates nifty vocabulary sheets. Number three, visualizing complex math concepts. Online graphing calculators such as Desmos help students quickly visualize functions and other types of coordinate plane data. Desmos also provides excellent math teaching resources. Number four, analyzing data. Use spreadsheets to graph and analyze data with your students. Number five, collaboration. Although I don't recommend email for younger students because it becomes a distraction, collaborating tools such as editing and commenting with the Google Docs can be a useful tool for partner work in a writing workshop. Students can work together to make comments and highlight and expand ideas. Number six, multimedia. Students can produce slideshows and videos for their schoolwork products to teach a broader audience. Number seven, real-time data, webcams, etc. Numerous government agencies and nonprofits provide real-time data that students can use to learn more about the world we live in. Earthquake data provided by USGS is one of many examples. Number eight, storing and organizing information. Simple document management is a 21st century skill that should be taught in our schools so they can learn how to organize and share information with others. Number nine, observations through Google Earth. Arguably one of the best resources available for teaching geography, science, and social studies, digital maps provide a powerful way for students to explore and visualize the world we live in. Number 10, teaching flashcard content. As you can see, I haven't even touched on educational learning games so far. 
For the most part, I think games should be avoided. There are good alternatives. However, I do feel that some flashcard games are useful. Learning multiplication facts is just one example, but we should limit the use of these in the classroom. I should also approach the issue of when should we not use technology in the classroom. The answer is simple. When it is used as a time filler. When an equally good alternative is not available. The deep philosophical concern with technology is really simply that the human interface is removed. We become one important step away from relationships. People say that technology can build relationships, but the data shows the opposite that loneliness has doubled over the past 50 years. I believe it's partly because we have less face-to-face -face interactions. It's really as simple as that.